Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to introduce y'all to the brand new 2022 Honda Trail 125, also known as the CT125 or the Hunter Cub 125. Now one of the first things I did when I got the bike is I modified this heel shifter right here. A lot of people are cutting those off right about here and just using it like a regular four-wheeler gear shifter and uh i didn't want to do that and i saw where someone recommended bending it so i pulled this piece off it unbolts up under here pulled it off took it outside and took a rubber mallet and a two by four and it used to come back out here and when you're riding and your foot sitting across this way, it wanting to bump that and grind a little bit. So I took the advice and I just bent it back over this way and reinstalled it back on. And I find that what I do with it is, I didn't know if I would use it or not, but I found that I like to shift in the first gear with the heel shifter and then do the rest of my gears up. Don't know why, just a habit I've formed in these short few miles I've rode it. Now, another thing I changed is, as you can see, the stock seat. It's a smaller seat. And what would happen, I'll lift this up right here. This right here comes up right behind that seat, like so. And it was extremely close when you're riding that thing. I didn't have a really a problem yet with it, but you could just tell that eventually, if you were riding on some rough territory and got some pretty big bumps, you was gonna take a tailbone or the bottom of your spine right there on that right there. And, you know, it came down pretty even with the seat, but if you came down with enough force, you, I think you could hurt yourself with it. One thing I don't like about the new seat is it's scuffing up the paint on this bar, just on that one side. And what it is, is just a staple right there. And uh, by the time I noticed it, it was already done. I mean, it scraped the paint off like the first time or two that I closed it, trying to get it adjusted to where it would stay closed. And the damage was done then. I don't think it's really gonna do that much more damage and it's gonna keep itself cleaned off every time I open and close it. That being said, while I got the seat up, this is a cheap helmet holder. This is where you fuel it up at. Holds 1.4 gallons. Rumor is it gets about 158 miles to the gallon. I'm not so sure about that. Uh, maybe bone stock, but I didn't leave it bone stock long enough to get that result. The modification I made was I added this Apache 4800 box. It's a box that they use for pistols or anything that you want to lock up in a watertight, airtight container. There's a lot of people with these little motorcycles that are using these boxes, and just about every one of them are set up different. For instance, I have never seen another one that had the long seat installed on it and had the Apache. Chris over at PSBE Adventures has, if I'm not mistaken, the stock seat, and he has this mounted up here towards the front, and then he's got a little bit of this carrying platform right here that he can still use back on the back. I did forget to mention to y'all the name of this seat, but it is a... Motor Lord, I don't know if that's going to focus in there or not, but it's made by Motor Lord out of Thailand. Another super easy modification I've done on this is this kickstart. It comes stock. This is turned up this way, and that puts this part up here kind of level with this pedal. I mean, this uh, footrest. What would happen? Like the other side where your foot would hit the shifter on the back, it would try to get on top of this 
kickstart and it put a little pressure on there and then it would try to engage in the splines in there and make a clicking noise and it was very irritating. It was kind of a, I felt like a cause for concern. It may not have hurt nothing, but I didn't like it. But now you can put your foot on there and as you can see, you got plenty of clearance back there. Unless you're doing some rough riding, you're not gonna bother with that right there anymore. Grips that come on this motorcycle are extremely skinny. And I was searching around and found something they call grip puppies. And they slide over your existing grips. You use soap and water and a whole lot of force and aggravation to finally get them on. Now the reason I got mine rolled over on these edges right here is because as I tend to do, I got my buggy ahead of my horse, excited about getting those things on there and I forgot to cut them off to length before I put them on. And the length would be just cutting it off right there, even with that. Now they work just fine like this. It doesn't cause any problems. You can fold it back out all the way and that'll go back down flat and it still doesn't cause any problems. So I may cut them off or I may keep them rolled up. I don't know. Time will tell. I ended up taking the stock tires off of this bike shortly after I got it. Uh, the back tire was fine. It gripped fine. Didn't have any problem with it. The front tire, on the other hand, if you live in Georgia, then you're apt to be around a lot of pine trees and when riding with these stock tires when you got on that loose pine straw and got on just the slightest of an incline like maybe trying to come up out of a rut or something like that that tire right there would slip i had two close calls in about 20 minutes with that front tire right there and I decided right then that I was going to go with these dual sport tires. The ones I went with are the Shinko 244 Golden Boys. I think this is a 2.75 by 17. And on the back is a three inch by 17. Now, when I, when I ordered some of my other parts, I'm gonna show you. I ordered a fender riser. This fender mount used to mount down here. And all this is is just a, a little bracket that moves it up. It looks like maybe two, two and a quarter inches or something like that. And this went from riding just over the tire to where it's at now. It's a pretty good bit of space. And it may look like a lot of overkill, but I'm hoping that that's gonna give me enough clearance because I went ahead and bought another three inch to go on the front. Uh, I know it's gonna slow the bike down some. These are 125s and not very powerful, but I feel like it'll ride better with the bigger tire on there. I feel like it'll handle better. Another thing I had done to this bike was I added a 45 millimeter handlebar riser, which is equal to an inch and nine sixteenths. It brought it up. And uh, I done that cause I'm a little taller and this seat adds a little bit of height to the motorcycle. So I was just trying to you know, bring the handlebars up with the seat. But what I found was it completely changes the way the motorcycle handles. It's very squirrely in a turn. You would have been able to get used to it, but I just wasn't comfortable with it. So the route I went was just to go right back stock with it. One thing I forgot to mention to y'all about this fender riser is when you add that on, you have to move your horn. This horn used to sit a little lower and what was happening to other riders that had done this mod, whenever they would go on rough terrain, that 
the mounting bracket would come down and put a dent right along in here somewhere. I just wanted to go ahead and prevent that. A guard under here to protect the engine from the bottom side. But this just adds some protection on the left and right side. An accessory that I have coming, it should be here by tomorrow. It's one of those things where the shipping, the tracking number was made, but it never shows where it left. I contacted the people and they said that it supposedly is in route and should be here by tomorrow, but it mounts right here and it allows you to strap a bag or anything that you want to carry right up in here. Uh, you can see right here is just a, a blank, a filler right there. And this thing is actually already ported for a USB charger. I got that in the mail today, so I'm gonna get that installed. And uh, it's actually got a power button on it, so you can hook it straight to your battery. And when you turn it on, supposedly this thing lights up, so you'll know it's on and won't forget to turn it off. I'm saying that, but I'm not seeing anywhere to push a button and turn it off. That doesn't look like it does anything. So maybe I got the wrong thing. We'll see about that also. Okay, what I did, I was looking at two different chargers to go on this bike. And one of them had a power button on it and it would light up blue and you could turn it off and on and not have to hook into your headlight. I was also looking at these that show the readout of the volts that your battery is at at the time. And I was thinking that this one had both, but I was wrong about that. So I'll send this one back, get the other one. Another upcoming accessory I'm gonna to add to this is this headlight guard made by Moto Skills and also this front rack made by the same company. And uh, unfortunately, the little USB charger is gonna hold me up from putting that on there because I'm thinking I'll have to take all that stuff back off to, to add the USB charger. Uh, one other thing that I just got yesterday is this gold plug. And these motorcycles do not have a oil filter so people are recommending that you get one of these gold plugs that has a high power magnet on the end of it to catch all the tiny loose particles and all from your brake in and then just from your regular engine wear for the rest of the life of the motor. And uh, it's not the best, it's not a filter, but at least it's catching that stuff and it's keeping it from running through your motor. Uh, that's about all I can think of right now that I've done. When I first got it, when I had the short seat on and didn't have this on, this was just a sea of red. I mean, it, it was too much red with this platform. It's hard to tell with all this on there. But uh, I did take this and I painted it a matte black with Plasti Dip and it turned out about the finish of this box right here, and it looked really good. Uh, I only had a couple of layers on there, so if you rubbed against it with something hard, then it would leave a little spot on it of red, and you could just cover it right back up very easily. But uh, once I added this bigger seat on here and then added this box on, it covered enough of that red to make it look a lot better than what it did. So, I'm just gonna roll with that for now. Uh, looking forward to getting out there and riding this thing on some pretty country roads, hopefully some mountainous roads before too awful long. I said I don't have very many miles on this bike. And what I've got at this point is 357 miles. Oh, uh, when I first got this thing, I was watching some people and they were saying that 300 miles would be the break-in mileage on it. 
thumbing back through my owner's manual today, it says 600 miles. So maybe I hadn't done any damage to this engine by starting to get on it a little harder. These are not fast bikes at all. Uh, bone stock with those tires on it and all the other stuff not on it, less weight. It would run about 58 miles an hour. Now that I've added these things to it with these tires and the rest, I, it's running more along around 53 or something like that. And that's downhill. <laughs> <laughs> wind at your back like I say they're not fast they're made to get out and run around town with these things over in Thailand and all these people riding up and down the streets all day long and you know you don't need a 60 or 70 mile per hour bike over there to run up and down those little streets so that's what they were originally made for and a dealership started putting knobby tires on them and changing them around a little bit and Honda got a hold of that idea and then they just started making them to that specification I don't know they've made a good bike they went from being 50 cc's to 90 to 110 and now 125 another thing is this little 125 engine is supposed to last forever but if it don't, or if you decide you want some more power, you can just do a little engine work on this thing very cheap and change it over to a 150 cc and then, you know, gain back some of those mile per hour that you lost, hopefully. Anyway, that'll be later on down the road. Right now, I just want to get it where, I, where I'm happy with the way it's set up and put some miles on it. If you want to go over and check out Chris at PSBE Adventures, he has a lot of mods he's done to his bike. He goes into detail about how to do them. And he has some awesome footage from riding in the mountains and different places. I've nowhere near seen all his videos, but he seems like a real good down to earth dude. Y'all should go check him out. All right, thank y'all for watching. Come back and see us anytime. We'll leave the light on.